Hello friends, a very warm welcome to another live stream week 11, um, Sunday fun day as we might call it. Uh, welcome back to the channel if you're returning, if you're new here, hello and welcome. A, a brief introduction, what's on the menu for today? Today is uh, going to be a pick up from where I left off, um, so in week weekly live stream number 10 last weekend's stream I started a new electronica music idea which sounds like this let's have a little preview and the idea today is pick up where I left off. There's a few things to add here to this idea, to the loop, let's say, that I'm still working on. A little bit of sound design to do, and then I plan to move across into the arrangement. So it should be an interesting video today. It's gonna to be a bit about building this loop up, finishing it off, and then moving across into arrangement. So stick around. Also, you know, if you've got any comments or questions along the way, do drop them in the chat. Let us know how you're doing, where you're tuned in and listening from. A uh, little bit about the channel. I mean, the idea of the live stream videos here is hopefully you can take away something about Ableton Live. Uh, I am working in Live 12 as well. So if you're using 12 and it's new to you, perhaps you'll see some techniques in there that uh, you can also use in the with the new tools that come with Ableton Live 12. The other concepts of this channel is um, it's done in real time. So, you know, roll along with me as the successes and failures develop in front of your own eyes. As I said, it's all about Ableton Live. Electronica is the theme of the music. And I also like to demonstrate that do we need to buy 30 third party plugins? Are they necessary? Well, we'll find out here because um, I'm using Ableton Live's built-in instruments and effects and things like that. So you can kind of get a feel for what you can do with those. And I really think there's a strong argument that uh, budget-wise, you don't have to go and buy a lot of these third-party plugins that uh, you see around. So without further ado, let's dive in and get stuck into what needs to happen in, in this um, loop, how we're going to develop it. So for the moment, I'll just walk you through what we've got here. We've got an 808 uh, drum kit, which is just a basic um, kick and a rim shot and a hi-hat. And we've got a clap sort of layering on top of that rim shot. Nice little percussion loop. Same with the tabla here. It's another percussion loop, quite melodic. Then we've got these chords that are being gated, uh, very much in the style of bicep, which was the concept of what I was showing when I built these out in last week's stream. By the way, I'll pop somewhere up here a card to that video. So if you want to follow the journey along, you need to go back to week 10, the week before, and you can see how this idea began. Then we've got this kind of, you know, pad drone kind of sequence that was built from the chords run through pull stretch, and then it's been, uh, turned into a bit of a sequence. And then I do have a couple of things that I want to develop further. There's a vocal track. This little sample, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that just yet. Possibly not just as it is at the moment. And then I've got what I need to do today, which is I want to add a bass line and a melody. So let's look at the bass line, how I thought I would do a bass line to go with this track. So the chords look like this. If we click in to have a look at the original chords. They're, they're seventh chords, so four note chords. That's the pattern of the chords, and they're up in the nice, right in the middle of the piano roll in that frequency range, so they're sitting up there. Means that we've got room down here for a melody, Some uh, sorry, for a bass line somewhere down in this area here, as well as our kick's gonna be nice and low down in here. And then above that, we've also got room in theory for a melody to sit on top. So let's look at the bass line first. And literally what I've done is I've copied the chord track across. So I took the chord track over here and I've just moved it over to the bass track. And then essentially I've kind of muted a lot of the notes here as I don't want chords on my bass line, and then essentially just rewritten a little bit of the MIDI. 
So what we might do here, just, just to show you is, let's say we remove these muted notes up here, and then we can grab the chord progression, and let's say we copy all of that, and then paste it into this clip here. So you can kind of see there, that is where the chords are sitting, right? They're, they're up there. And I've kind of followed in some cases the same notes of the chord, but lower down. And in other cases, I've just written a bit of a new pattern to kind of fit. But the idea is it's kind of almost like a root note bass. If it was a pure root note bass, it would look like this, where we would just simply take the chords like that and expose the root note and bring, copy that down. So let's say we actually do that so you can have a little listen. So this would be an idea of the root note bass. Actually, let's just say we, there's the original chords, we'll duplicate this down as they're now sitting together. We'll give this a different color so we know this is the one we're gonna work on. And the original bass down here, or well, the one I'm going to use, I'm going to mute for a moment. And if I was doing a root note bass, I would just take all of this MIDI down here now with the root notes unmuted and bring it down into that octave range where I think the bass line should be. And let's have a listen to what that sounds like. And we can turn off a few things here. Right, and already to me, it's a little bit boring. For example, you can see the root note of those two chords are the same. So an idea here would be to, there's nothing wrong with exposing another note from the chord, right? Perhaps that will sound more interesting. Um, so you can use other notes from the chord or alternatively, you can also look at the scale which is showing over here or in G minor and you could move the notes. So if we turn on the scale here in the clip, you can see here, we could move it, you know, to another note that's in the key of the scale, right? So it's still gonna complement the chords, it's in the key of the scale, and you can obviously listen out for, you know, how it fits in and around the chords if you're doing that. So to come back to what I've done, uh, I've figured out a pattern, as I said, that is taking, so now we can mute all that chords up the top there, I've sort of written a pattern here that I like that walks around the notes in the chords and changes, as you can see towards the end here, a little bit of a different pattern. So if we compare the two, uh, let's say we just have the root note bass here, it's in a different note position now. Let's have a listen to that. So it sounds a bit more interesting with that new note that I've added to it. And if I go to the pattern that I've made here, not that one, sorry, right at the top. Right, so it just walks around the bass a little bit differently, I think a bit more interesting. And if we put it with the chords, uh, we wanna be careful there because I noticed it hasn't copied across, so I don't wanna lose my chords. So let's say we now bring the chords in and listen to the two different bass lines together with the chords. So that's my preferred bass. Let's have this simple root note bass with one note change. We just need to get them also to sync up in time. So what we'll do is we'll just drag that down for a second, pop that up, and then we'll push this scene. So that way the sequence is in the right order.
Another option, by the way, just tips, tips on some bass, baseline tips here for you. We could also highlight, again, we can get rid of all the other notes of the chord that we're not using if we like, or we could leave them there if we want to use them later. Let's just say we remove them from now. We could now take this pattern here, uh, Option E on a Mac, so it would be Alt on a Windows, and then you get this little symbol pop up if you hover over one of the notes, and now we could kind of split them, and we could split them right down to the note division or something a little bit different. Uh, and now we would start to get a bit more of a sort of groovier pattern. So if you want the synth to re-trigger, that's a good way to do that. Right, and we could also have combinations of these where you put some notes together. So feel free to play around with that. That's just a couple of extra tips there. So as I said, I've already got a bass that I quite like, so I'm gonna drag that out of the way, bring the one back up that um, I've created here with this little walking around. And the next thing I wanna work on is the synth itself. So the synth is absolutely, if we look at the bass track, it's just purely a wavetable and it's pure one oscillator in a sawtooth. The rest of this is just default. It's just how it sounds when you drag a wavetable onto a track. By the way, if you're here in the live stream with me, and as I said, you've got any questions, do feel free to drop them in the chat about Ableton Live, Live 12, what I'm doing here, electronica, electronic music, music for DJs, music for clubs. Be love, love to hear from you and uh, try and help you answer any of those questions you might have. All right, so let's bring the bass back in. Again, we can switch off the chords for a moment. And now let's work on the sound. So we've got one oscillator in a sawtooth. Uh, let's say we detune this oscillator a little bit. Just a few cents positive. Let's bring an oscillator to. Let's also have a sawtooth. So we get this kind of detune kind of sound. And let's detune the second oscillator the opposite direction a bit. So we get that nice re-space kind of sound, which is a very famous uh, sound. So I've actually done a tutorial on my channel about re-spaces. This is the sort of sound that you kind of get when we take two of the same waveforms and tune them a little bit apart from each other. We could also move the second oscillator in some semitones if we wanted like a layered bass a bit. Right, but I'm, I'm not kind of going for that. I just like what we've got at the moment. That's a good starting point. Let's turn it into a monophonic synth as it's not chords and there's no need for poly polyphony. Let's move the filter down a bit. Let's try maybe a notch filter. So, This could be nice with some modulation on it. So let's do that. Let's pop to the matrix and give the field of frequency knob a little bit of LFO action. And we can make it a little bit faster. Could also note sync it if, if we want. We're in frequency at the moment. So if we put it into note sync, we would get this modulation in a, a note sync value. Kind of like it in frequency because it's a little bit different. It's not perfectly on time. That way it kind of steers away from other things that are synced to quarter notes. And we could also fade the LFO, so. OK, 
Okay. Do we want some unison as well, perhaps? Less voices and less smaller amount. I'm just going to check that for later for mixing because I can hear that's kind of put it quite wide and I'm not sure that I want it so wide. So I'm just going to grab my isotope, isotope ozone imager and just have a little look at what it looks like. Yeah, it's a bit too wide for me. So that's what I was concerned with. So maybe for now, we'll keep it fairly mono. Yeah. All right. So we'll leave unison off because I don't want that sort of level of width to my bass at this point in time. Happy with the sounds. What else could we do? We could have a little bit more kind of movement here. Let's bring in the chords. So turn on the second filter and let's have that in serial and we'll have it the same high pass or high cut, sorry. Uh, sorry, I just realized. My bad, that was actually on the chord track, not on the bass track. So let's try that again, but over here on the bass track. Watch out for that one, girls and guys. Paying attention there. So what I want is a high cut filter as well as this notch filter. And in serial is fine. And I can then actually kind of also adjust the high cut as well as this nice little notch that's modulating around that point that I've set on the frequency here. So let's try that again. And we could have an envelope modulating this. A bit more movement. By the way, if you are joining the live stream uh, and you're there, if you could let me know if my microphone level is okay and also the level of the music, that would be super appreciated. Um, thank you very much if you can do so. Thank you. All right, so let's add a little bit of processing behind this just to get it to sound closer to a finished sound. So the chorus will add a bit of width, but in this case, it's a bit more controlled than the unison and I can dial it in to taste. So that gives us a little bit of nice chorusing and movement. Add some feedback, we get that kind of cool sound that's in a bit of tasty we could have overdrive if we wanted a really sort of crunchy kind of bass here so and that could be before the chorus or after depending on the result we're looking for and we could also have raw here which would do a similar job to overdrive
can see what's going on in the imager up here depending on you know the different saturation types of raw what we're doing with the width really nice I think I prefer the raw to the um, overdrive as there's a lot more options here to shape the sound Try overdrive as well. Also, an option to keep the overdrive. I'm going to go with overdrive and just keep the raw off for a second. It's quite like the result there. Let's just stop that for a second, have a little look. Is there anything else a fancy kind of processing this with a little bit? Could do with probably a little bit of compression, but hopefully you can feel it's kind of a nice meaty bass now. It's kind of, you know, it's playing a very basic pattern, reminding ourselves it's virtually the root notes of the chord. And that's the thing, you know, if you if we're doing something like that, like a sustained bass. It means that it's, yeah, it's not adding a lot of groove and kind of rhythm to the track, but it's nice to then get that modulation into that bass so that it's a bit more interesting. It's not static. It's not just sitting there like holding a note, not at all. It's got like, you know, this detuning sound, the filter uh, moving around with an envelope and an LFO, and we can continue to develop that a bit, but hopefully you can kind of feel out that it's a bit more interesting. So let's say we add a bit of compression. Not a lot, just to rein in any peaks. Put back any gain that we remove. You can see it's only flickering when it catches a little peak or two. It's not doing any squashing at all, which is good. Okay, let's have a bit of a listen now with the bass with a few other pieces. Just a little bit of mixing to get everything to sit together a little bit better there. And an idea here, I just gave myself a little mental note here with this clip that I popped down here that says add gate. Um, there's a gate on this chord track. Um, it's what's kind of giving the bicep-ish feel to the chord progression and the, the wavetable that's playing that. So if we turn the gate off, we've got chords that sound like this.
So again, just to point out, as I said, I went all through kind of how I did that in the previous week's video, which I'm gonna link above or at the end of today's stream. So do check that out if you're interested. Um, so the gate here is getting a trigger from this track over here that we're not listening to the synth, but it's sending out this trigger pattern to the gate, which is then gating the chords. And what we could do, could be nice in this track to have the gate automate on and off. So it only gates certain notes, but what I was thinking as well is again, if you do want a more rhythmic bass, you can come back to this idea that I showed before where we could kind of like, you know, make all the notes repeat like so, or we could actually add that gate trigger to the sustain notes. So the idea would be we copy the gate over. I think I've already copied it over and just switched it off. Yes, it's here. I also copied the filter over, um, which is also on this chord track as an option of a side chain from those triggers. So I've, I've set up a comparison where with the chord track, So that's what a sidechain filter sounds like as opposed to a sidechain gate. Right, so we've got choices. We've got this really nice choice of how we rhythmically kind of chop, chop those chords, how they follow that trigger track. So on the bass, let's have a listen to what it sounds like with either the gate or the filter. So it'll need a little bit of adjustment as it's not exactly the same as how it's set up for the chords, but you can kind of feel here the choppiness. And if we do the filter, so some nice options. So really nice, lots of opportunity there to use perhaps the gates on the bass and the filter on the chords that gives us already a different vibe there or no gates or as I said, I'm thinking actually it could be really nice to perhaps automate that. So Yeah, so one of those or the other of those kind of switches on and off rather than it just all the time being gated. So I really like when opportunities open up where we've got sort of up our sleeve as we might rephrase it, uh, options, thoughts, which is great of how to, this is going to help for the arrangement, right? It's going to help develop the song and make it interesting and vary it, um, things in the bank that we can use for later. All right, so moving on to the melody track. Let's take a look at that. Um, similarly to the bass, uh, in the end of last week's stream, I just put a wavetable here. Uh, it's the basic sine wave, nothing's been done to it. And I copied over the chord track, uh, the original chord progression, and the bass track as a thought of you know some MIDI for this track, but I'm actually thinking today I'm gonna attempt to, this is all happening in real time, I'm gonna attempt to play in something that's a bit more vibey, you know, so. 
So let's try and maybe play something in over this chord and this scale of G minor and see if we can come up with sort of an original melody that sound, sits quite nice on here. As, as some of the ideas I had when I copied these, this MIDI over was I was thinking about arpeggiating the chords, that could be an option of coming up with the MIDI, but I'm thinking today to kind of play some of the notes in the scale and just have a feel around and uh, if you can bear with me while I noodle around on the keyboard for a second, uh, hopefully I can come up with something nice and complimentary, play it in and it's going to suit these chords and bass uh, that I've developed from the week before. Again, if you are here in the live stream, do let me know, uh, say hello and it'd be great to know if my levels are okay as um, obviously I'm flying a bit, uh, as we say, blind on that side of it. All right, so let's kind of bring down a few of the elements. So it's not, we don't need the vocal, that's for sure. We don't need this pad drone. We don't need the percussions, just need a basic drum beat. We could also have the bass, but let's see. Okay, something in there. Okay, let's have a little look in there and see if there's a nice little section that I can use. So what we might do, I think this section here could work. Let's say that we just kind of bring these onto the bar a little bit. So they're just a little bit in front. So let's say we go onto the bar there. We'll try that again. We'll leave this note out. We don't want to capture that as well. It's this last little section here. Let's bring that over. Then we can kind of loop up this bit here. We might not need that note there, I don't think. So let's listen to that. Oh, hang on. So have our playhead at the start there. And let's trigger the scene.
Hey, Sim, how are you doing? Thank you very much for letting me know that. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, as I said, it's a bit, uh, always a bit strange when you're talking to a camera and playing music for at least half an hour or so, and you're not really sure if it's working properly or not. So I appreciate that. Um, I think this melody works. I mean, there was uh, some other really good sections in here as well that were interesting. So, but this little progression is kind of working here. Needs a little quantization. So let me just trigger again. Just nudging those notes around a little bit manually as to where I think they should be. Okay, so that one needs to cover there. Good little starting point, I think, on the melody. I should really ask anybody who's <laughs> here listening, should we keep that one? Should we do it again? I think it's a, a keeper from my end. So I'm going to get rid of these chord and bass MIDI because I'm not going to use those. As I said, I kind of had this idea to play it in. Uh, also, this original down here was the original chord, so that could disappear. This is now the original, let's say, take of these, this melody idea I've played in. So we've now sort of preserved that down there and we can bring that up here. And now literally in this one, I'm going to crop the clip to that little area. So we've kind of made our melody happen there. Now let's try it up an octave. And now let's get a bit of work happening into the synth here. So maybe we'll do something different. We'll have instead of Ableton, something else from Ableton's uh, locker of instruments. And again, I spoke about that right at the start of today. You know, stick around, watch the video. Um, you know, do we need to buy all these third party um, synths that we see other people using? Um, you know, or can we sort of make the sounds we want to make, uh, learning a bit of synthesis and understanding Ableton's instruments, the ones that come with the software. And I see many, many people avoiding using these and dropping Serum and Massive. And uh, I own a lot of those synths and they're amazing and the presets are amazing, but uh, you know, Ableton and learning how to work with Ableton's instruments can get you very far without uh, needing to, you know, max out your credit cards on lots of plugins. Yeah, I think it's maybe a little high up here, so we might just come back to where it was. That sounds quite funny, the square wave. Yeah, I'm not sure about that for the moment.
be doing that. One moment. Okay. Well, I might actually return to Wavetable for this uh, as I want to sort of layer it up a little bit differently. So analog might not be the choice this time around. modulate the oscillator to position a little bit with either an envelope or an LFO. Just trying out some ideas here. Thank you. 
Let's modulate the LFO to a mount with the other LFO. Nice for a little bit of interesting movement again. We're getting sort of movement and interest into this melody. Let's add a little bit of processing to it as well just to get it to sound nice. Reaching for some favorites here. So just to explain what I'm doing there in the in raw you have a lot of modulation possibilities um, like a lot of the new devices in live and I particularly like the bias of the saturation curve modulating this I think it opens up a lot of interesting sound design patterns and in uh, sound design possibilities and in this case I've kind of chosen the bias by clicking on it it's then popped up in the matrix here and then i've assigned lfo one to it and then i've sort of looked okay at the moment it's in a triangle shape i've got it syncing to quarter notes and then i've just been adjusting the you can also adjust the bias uh, so if we look at it sort of here. so we can move where the bias is fo focusing on that particular saturation curve right and the rate is changing the speed of the LFO if we have a sine wave it will sound different or a square wave will soar up soar down it's more choppy but it can be really nice and of course there's filtering in here so you know I think one day I probably want to do a deep dive on RAW as the possibilities of what you can get out of RAW in terms of sound design is huge let's just say all right that down a little bit it's a bit too it was a bit too much also slowing it down a bit
Okay, it's crying out for a bit of echo or delay. All right, so there's a lot of options there. I've probably gone down a bit of a rabbit hole that might end up being a rabbit hole that I'll never return down, but that's good enough for sound design and sound design possibilities. And again, I hope you can kind of feel that uh, there's quite a lot of uh, what I like to call, you know, development in the bank, which is gonna be really good, as I said, as we progress forwards, because we've got lots of things that we can work with. So. At that point, um, let's have a little tidy up here. We can now say that we've got a melody, we've got a bass line that we didn't have when we started today. Uh, everything's also, I think, I'm just gonna have a quick listen from the mixing point of view. So the melody definitely could do with a little bit of an EQ cleanup as well. Let's do that. Thank you. 
All right, so housekeeping. Let's say that all of these little clips down here, they belong to early on in the process and we don't need those anymore. So we can pop those down. And we've got this main loop up the top here. So let's maybe try and create a couple more scenes before we move over to the arrangement view. So let's duplicate this scene, drag it down a little bit. And so this scene here is going to be somewhere like the peak of the track. That's generally what I try and write here. I'm trying to write the sort of the main part of the show when we've reached up to that point in the track. So everything else scene wise or arrangement wise are going to be either building up to this or breaking it down or variations of it, right? So if we come down here a little bit, so we know that that's one scene and that one scene is going to be, we can call it over here. We can say that's the peak, right? We've got some options down here. These are alternative clips to do with the percussion loop. So it's a different loop. So we've got a variation of that. The chords here, I've got two chord progressions. It's the same chords, but on the top main clip I've been using, it's four notes, seventh chords. And down here, we've just got triads. So that could be a nice switch up. And again, with the pad drone, I've got one which is kind of sustained. It's in tones mode over here, as it's something I recorded to audio. And the other pad is in beats mode in the 16th preserved note. So it's got that choppy kind of sequence feel to it. So on this scene down here, let's say we're doing a verse one scene kind of thing, right? So we could say drums probably yes. Um, we could probably do without all of the percussion. So maybe we say the tabla loop goes out. Um, let's say vocals, not sure about yet. So we'll sprinkle those in later. Padrone could already be here. Melody, possibly not. And maybe the chords are here at this point in time or the bass. So let's say just the bass for now with the drum kits and a bit of percussion and that sequence as we we'll listen to that. What happens if we have two instead? Yeah, I think that might be better early on. So we might use the second clip down in this area. And then let's see if we do bring the chords in. What happens if we bring them in with the gate off? Yeah, I think the tabla probably actually, I will use that in this scene. Just checking back in with the bass because I believe I left the gate on, yep. Okay, let's try this again now. Okay, so let's have another copy of the peak. Let's try and make another scene. And let's have a scene where we do some changes. So let's say it's a scene where we perhaps go into a breakdown. So let's say we call this a break of some sorts. And in the break, let's open up the drum kit. So what we might do in the future is split out these parts. But what we can do over here is let's give this drum clip a different co color so we know it's something different. And again, we can write in it that it's two and this is one which has all the drums. And in two, say we go into the bass drum and we mute that. And we might just have the rims and the hi-hats here. Let's take out the clap bass and see what we are going to bring in here. So I think definitely two, perhaps. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's another scene that we can work with. Um, sorry, I meant to do that. Let's have another copy of the peak. And in this case, we might do, so we're gonna bring the melody in at some point. So we might have a verse two. Which is gonna be pretty close to the peak to be fair. We might just take a few things out, so the melody is definitely going to come in. Nice, and then we'd probably want our peak, which will be when everything comes in, essentially, particularly in the musical parts, let's say. So it can always, this is the thing, you can always kind of try and imagine, use your imagination a little bit and think about like, you know, sort of little variations. And also actually I didn't use the second chord loop or the second percussion loop. So maybe let's have a little look at that. The second um, percussion, loop, second chord loop, let's try it in the break scene or verse one. Yeah, I think it could be nice in scene one as a change there. Let's also try the other percussion loop maybe early on. And finally, if you have a track, um, well, we, we do have some elements we haven't used, particularly this vocal, as I said, I think I would like to maybe write that inside. Uh, at the moment, it's just an audio sample loop, looping a certain part of it, but I think I'd quite like to write a bit of a pattern that plays certain parts of the sample. So I'm gonna work on that in the future, but another scene we could do, which could be interesting, would be a bridge scene um, before the outro. And that's uh, often I, write, I like bridges in my track. So that would be something where we might have something completely new going on. So maybe with the melody here, um, do something completely different. Let's see if we can kind of come up with a little bit of an edit here uh, for the bridge perhaps. And the bridge could actually, let me just um, do that again. Take the breakdown because I want to kind of break it down a little bit in the bridge. Thank you. 
Another little idea for another clip here. This is still working with the original there, but let's try another one here. The different variations. So in the second phrase, let's try flipping that. Yeah. There we go. So there's an answer. There's a nice little original touch to the bridge. And those sort of tools will be built into Ableton for a while. So don't sleep on these kind of inversions, right? Oops, I just made a mistake there. Let's go back. Um, all right, now we're in better shape. So those kind of tools have existed for a while where you can often like, first of all, I was trying to rhythmically displace the MIDI a little bit, which is a great technique for not just copying and pasting your MIDI so it's the same all the time. It's like looking for little combinations perhaps of notes where you can rhythmically change their position. That changes the harmonic rhythm and catches people's ears. But these tools such as like they look a little bit different in 12, but they've just been around where you can actually grab things like the MIDI that you've got and you can reverse it uh, or you can invert it, right? And in 12, you've got some more powerful tools where you can kind of add intervals and do extra things to it. But just that simple little bit of an inversion there has created this really nice, I think, uh, bridge melody part. <laughs> Then we create another version here. There we go. So we have another little variation going on.
Right, so that gives me some nice material to work with. So now I'm going to head over into the arrangement view and start to kind of build out a bit of a rough arrangement uh, and get working over there. And there's a few things I've got a note here about adding maybe a new hi-hat as I wasn't super satisfied the one with the one that's currently playing and also still something to do perhaps with this vocal idea. Uh, it may or may not uh, stay in the track or if it does uh, write something specially for it. So let's say now what we can do is copy all of these little scenes that I've built up over here and bring them over into the arrangement view. We'll start with verse one, which is gonna be pretty early on. So that can come over here and be pasted in here somewhere. So let's say somewhere around bar 33. Didn't quite drop that where I wanted to. Let's try that again. Okay, that looks better. All right. And let's try this one, which is a little bit of a mini break that might happen somewhere in here. So we can just kind of drop it where we like for now. And then we're going to take the one that I built up, which is verse two, bring that over as well. That's definitely going to go to the right over here, much deeper in. So that could come in somewhere around there and then we've got a peak so let's bring that in okay and then finally this idea of a bridge scene as well And that's going to be pretty close to the outro somewhere in and around there that they're all kind of just roughly placed for now um, in different places so we can move that around but that's kind of going to be us in terms of the session view pretty much apart from perhaps coming back here to revisit the mixer and maybe do a few other bits and pieces uh, but definitely yep now that we have in 12 you know the ability to bring the mixer up down here it's changed the game a little bit on that side of it so uh, let's close up the browser a bit, bring the back to arranger button into action, and now we can kind of see what we've got over here. Um, and we can also, what have we got? Most of these are eight bar loops. This one over here seems to be a 16 bar loop, so we can just trim that up a bit. Right, and again, they're roughly placed, right? They're not necessarily in the exact position. And you can see it's also copied over the clips that I've muted, which is great. So if we want to unmute them, it's just a case of using the zero on the keyboard to do that. By the way, um, chat's a bit quiet today. I'm sure you're all busy enjoying your Sunday, but if you are here in the live stream with me, I hope you're enjoying it and you're finding this useful and you're taking some things away that are gonna help you with your music production in Ableton Live. This is an electronic uh, music idea that I'm kind of working on, tipping the cap a bit to artists like Bicep. And some of the things you can see on this channel uh, sort of, you know, this is re in real time, it's from scratch, there's no script, script going on. Um, and I'm also kind of trying to show you ways here that you can use Ableton Live's built-in devices and instruments to make your music uh, without necessarily needing to spend a fortune and max out your credit card on fancy plugins and presets and things. So hopefully you find that useful. If you are enjoying the content on the channel, please do give the video a like, uh, drop a comment, uh, it helps the channel a lot, and obviously subscribe to, to know when I'm posting the next video, which is a weekly live stream, so number 12 coming up in the weekend to come. All right, so what we need to do now is connect the dots of all these things that I've kind of like built out here, and we can start with the intro to the left, and then we can kind of work our way through, and if we like here, um, this scene over here, this is the peak scene, right? 
Um, how do I know that? Well, I can kind of come back here and have a little check if I need it, but it is the one that where everything should be kind of all in, let's say, pretty much playing. So what we can do here is add a marker up the top here somewhere and just make a note of that marker that that's the peak, right? And we can do the similar thing here. We can put a, a marker there and we can say that is the bridge. The only thing is that we might move those around from the position that those markers are, but it just means that if we're to loop up this section here and hit play or we'll click on that marker, we're going to be looping the track idea at the moment. So over here at the start of the track, and I'm gonna keep perhaps the drum kit, drum rack with everything in it so you can kind of see how I work with that. Um, as often I'm inclined myself to take the individual sounds, that is the ones I'm using in the rack, out of the rack, and then they're on their own individual tracks, but we can work with it like this as well. And let's say for the first 16 bars, we're going to have uh, some drums over here and inside of that, again, what I could already do actually, as I've made other clips elsewhere, is let's change our mind there. We won't have one over there and stretch because one includes my kick drum, but two doesn't. So if I bring two over here and put it there, it's just the rim shot on its own at the moment, right? And maybe what we could do inside of here, let's have a little look, is we could unmute perhaps some hi-hats, not even all of the hi-hats. So what do I mean by that? We could maybe start not yet with the full pattern and just maybe have at the end of the bar one of the hi-hats like this and maybe do a little change like so, just so there's a little variation in there. There's one down here. So listen to that. just to give us a little bit of change in there. Then we could bring a percussion loop and we've got two of them here. We've got one that's sort of much, if you're looking sort of at the MIDI here, this one is constantly looping and my other loop of the same instrument is not constantly looping. Let's try one in here. Could also maybe have our pad drone over in the intro. And again, we've got two choices. I've kind of made this sequence, and then I've got clip two, which is the more sustained version, which I think might suit here. And what I will most likely do is bring this in nice and gradually. It won't come in hard like that. It'll slowly be sweeping in. Maybe have a few claps here towards the end so we can kind of make our own little custom clap. The change of phrase. And maybe we can even try this with a little bit of the Ableton Returns reverb over here and we could automate maybe the reverb send on this clap, which maybe we can turn it into something like a nice big reverby snare clap hit here. So let's say we open up show automation here, click on the reverb box down here. Say so show parameters, click there, there it is. And we can see a reverb and let's say we try a little bit of a boomy kind of clap at the end here. May or, not, may or may not be the answer, but let's try it. Okay, so I'd want a lot more reverb than that. Okay, 
and we could maybe have a little fill quite the timing I'm looking for that's what I'm looking for and then with this reverb here we can kind of kill it off a little bit later so how long will it go before silence right so while we're here might as well sort of sort out this pad drone then kind of how I had it in my head to bring it in so let's say we pop a filter on this track and instead of using a volume ramp I'm going to automate the filter on off so first of all I want it to switch on where I want it to come on start and yeah later I'll move everything over but I'll keep it like that for now but uh, I like to work actually from bar three or five pers personally myself so that I've got some space in the front here but we'll keep it like this so you can kind of see if it helps you see the, the bar count etc for now um, so the filter's going to turn on there let's say maybe we switch it off here and we're going to take the frequency and also automate that and we're going to open up from a more muted filter maybe something as low as that let's see or here shall we say okay it's a bit too low so we'll bring that up And if we want this to move around, by the way, if you want this to be a little bit more interesting again, if it's too static for you, you can always use the LFO on the filter here. So we do have some panning, which is kind of moving this sound left to right, which could come after the filter or it can come before. Literally, don't be afraid to ever move your effects around like this. Do you want the filtered sound being panned left and right? So if the, the panning's here, then the filter is happening after the panning so the movement is being filtered everything in front of it's being filtered if you put it here then we're sort of saying we're filtering whatever's going on in front and then the panning's happening after the filter so try those things out listen and listen out for what you prefer there's no rule book on that not at all and you should always be trying to move things around should the chorus go before the eq but also think like often there's a use case scenario i'm cleaning up the sound and then the chorus is whatever sound i've cleaned up if the eq is over here i'm chorusing the sound and then the eq is then cleaning up post chorus and that might sometimes not make a lot of sense because you've kind of made a sound sound a certain way and then you're cutting it all away here right so it's kind of think about signal flow and try things out as i said and use your ears may need to guide you with that so checking this out what does it sound like? I think I would have the filter before that. And if we want the filter to wobble a bit, we can use its built-in LFO here. It's currently a sine wave. You can kind of hear that movement. And if we slow it right down, right, so if I make this really strong so you can hear what it's doing right so you can have that kind of opening and closing of the filter but you can have it very gently so not only is the filter opening up and being automated to open up but it's also got this wobble from the LFO that's not something what it sounds like at the moment that I want but I just wanted to show you that that's built in there and we can use that to add again some a little bit of movement because the filter is kind of opening and closing as well as opening up and again it could be note synced so you can get that nice feeling like that and you could change to a saw 
So if you're building risers, that, that's your style of music, then you can probably hear that this would be extremely useful to make an interesting riser, right? As opposed to a riser that doesn't really sound all that interesting. All right, so we've got this very nice basic intro coming along here. First 16 bars. End of the first, sorry, eight bars. Let's just clear out a bit of space there as well. And I also really like when you come up with little themes like this little reverby part that I've made here now uh, of those uh, claps that uh, have the reverb on them automated like that. We can now reuse that and we can reuse it in similar places at the end of phrases, or we could even have surprises where we kind of have it somewhere else in the pattern, right? So we could spice up this area a little bit in here with another copy of that. So for the next eight bars, so they're gonna be a little bit different to the first eight bars. So another thing we could do up here is where the drums are on the drum rack, the 808 drums, if we split that and go into this second clip here, we could perhaps now open up all the hi-hats in the second six, eight bars. So over this 16 bars, we've now got this little bit of action here and the hi-hats evolving. Notice they didn't copy my reverb over there, so you do need that because it's part of the sound. Happy with that. Let's drag over what we think we're going to keep on working with here. Copy this theme as well here. So here we might bring in our kick drum with the rest of the drum groove. Let's have a look at the pad on the filter side of things. modulate that a bit so that it's opening and closing just with some hand-drawn automation just so again it's got a little bit of the filter opening and closing important thing is because <laughs> actually we don't hear this at the moment because I know why do I know that because I haven't uh, opened up the filter right and I do really recommend that you automate the filter on and off so you make sure you know 
where you want it to be switched on, where you don't. So, uh, I've come across a lot of students work in the past where they've not automated the filter on off and that means that the filter is constantly over your music and be careful of that because it's obviously changing how it sounds. In this case we want it to change how it sounds but I had accidentally or not paid attention to the fact that I had left it closed so we weren't hearing this automation yet, now we will. And it's probably a bit too strong I think. Yeah, that's more what I'm looking for. By the way, if you're joining the live stream, welcome to the channel. I hope you're enjoying the content on here. Do give a, the video a like if you're enjoying the content. Uh, subscribe to the channel so you know when the next video is coming out. And feel free to drop a comment. If you've got any question, I'll do my best to answer it. Hope you're having a great Sunday. We're here in Ibiza doing the stream here, Sunday fun day. Working on a track that I started in the previous week. This is live stream 11. Live stream 10 was the this idea starting off and it looks like there's going to be a second video based on the arrangement I would say looking at uh, where we're going to get to today. So in the second section here I would probably bring in my extra claps that go on top of the room shot. We can have one of these again perhaps at the turn of the phrase. Let's try and capture all of it. So I want to paste that kind of there, and I want to paste this as well. Uh, let's try that. some of these themes again. Definitely going to take out the kick drum for the last little bar. Yeah, maybe just have a couple of the kicks. There we go. Just change the pattern slightly. Can bring this theme in. the reverb. Now I need to make my reverb end quicker this time round as the claps are going to return afterwards. And maybe a fun one here to sort of like spice this up a little bit as well could maybe split the last four bars of the pad drone down here and I've kind of one of my little favorite ones to do let's open up the envelope here and let's bring in the mixer and let's have sorry not mixer we want the clip and we want transposition and we might just try a little pitch down here of some automation so let's click in a few points Snap it to the lines there. Let's try it a fifth down maybe.
yeah, it's maybe a little bit strong, so I might just make it a bit subtle, more subtle, so let's maybe not pitch it down quite so far. And also had a thought to maybe bring the bass in a bit earlier here, but not the full bass. So by that, I mean quite like to have maybe the bass line already, but let's try and thin it right out. So um, we do have a filter here that was more to do with the gate and the filtering of it. Um, but again, I could potentially just add a filter here. Let's try that. See what it sounds like. I'll pop that right over towards the end here. And in this case, I'm going to actually sweep out the low end with the filter. So we thin out the base a bit. We bring it in earlier so we can drop it later into the full base. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, maybe not for this sort of sustained style bass, so not that move, but let me try something with the gated uh, filter. So if I give it the trigger, I think to be honest, and uh, just playing around with a few ideas there, but I think to be honest, the best option here is if it comes in that actually I just use the instrument itself to control the filter and automate it. So by that, I'm just gonna click on the operate, the wavetable, sorry, uh, high cut filter that I've got going on here in the filter section and automate that as an idea here. So let's have a listen. going to take this out for a moment now that I put the bass in and I perhaps just rely on the automation to to the verse one section, let's say. So we can put a marker up here. It's the first loop that I copied over with start from here. So 
Well, that's super nice. That was a bit of a happy accident that's kind of happened there. We love those. Um, whereby the uh, pad drone was playing clip two and it's now moved into clip one, which is the more sequenced version. And I really like kind of how it was opening up there. The tabla comes in, the percussion is still clip one. Uh, the clap is there and the full drum kit is here. So we might play around with this, but I also hear possibilities here to automate the filter frequency now that I've just automated here. Something that we could try to do here would be to see if when the tableau comes in, which comes into new into the section. So something that I really try and pay a lot of attention to is as I'm sort of evolving from the start here, working my way through, um, it's often what you take away, not what you add, that adds up to a lot of help to pulling the tension and release of, an, of a song arrangement together. And here, we might be able to say, oh, well, hey, the tabla comes in and the other percussion loop goes away and give herself a break from it. We do have a second pattern of it as well. So maybe it's just an all, you know, switching over to that pattern is the answer. But, you know, think about opportunities as well to kind of take things out and then rebring them in later or take them out and not bring them back. But it's going to refresh us a lot. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with it not being there, right? Didn't bother me at all. I'm gonna make this sequence drone open up a bit slower. And we also might just give that clip one a different color. So it's a bit more obvious down there at the happy accident was much appreciated but you know at the end of the day it could be nice to sort of like make sure you kind of know what's going on here been here early you will hear on that bass the feedback of the chorus which when you saw me do that and I think it's made this really nice kind of unusual it's the bleepiness that's going on it's like it sounds like there's almost another oscillator or something or another pattern going on so it's added that really nice for my ears that character there so I'm just gonna drag a few things over that I know I want to keep working with as it is it's also maybe have this
Okay, let's try that. Let's see. I think that's all kind of working pretty good. The next thing I try and bring in is a bit of melody, I believe. So what I might just do is bring this section here just across to there. Okay, so let's have a look at the melody down here a bit. See if we can also make this a bit more minimal to start with. Right, just coming up with a bit of a custom kind of um, little progression here, just rearranging the melody slightly to make it sort of, you know, interesting, but at the same time different because later we can reveal it in other ways. So, you know, I enjoy kind of, kind of coming up with these parts as, as we go along. blur out here. Right, so I'm gonna go right back to the start of where I began with this sort of beginning of the arrangement. 
I'm going to uh, sort of wrap things up in about five minutes for today. Uh, obviously, the plan for next week at this point, well, not obviously, but my thoughts would be to carry on with this um, idea and continue to arrange it. I, I hope you're finding it useful to see this happening in real time and connect up these sections, continue to automate, continue to make it interesting. So what I wanted to do by sort of going back to the start is just feel out a little bit like the idea here was this particular section that's kind of sitting here down, this here, is, is potentially a little break, like a mini break. And the question would be, would it feel right to, to come in where it currently is sitting or do we need it at all? Or is it going to need to come in later? So just kind of feel out a little bit what happened so far, building up to where we are and yep, go from there a little bit. So in theory, we would be looking at if we were stretching this out in another 16 bars, it would be here at 65. And here is 16 bars as well. So let's maybe just put some divisions there so we can kind of see the 16 bar sections we have. So the first 16 and 32. So we could probably say here, not number three, it's the intro. Then we're into section B of the intro, let's say, then verse one. Here we have section B of verse one, and then maybe, maybe where this is, there could be a break, or well, it could be a break before it. Um, that's sort of something to figure out here. So let's see. But I, I was just removing things there with the idea we might jump into a break there, but it, for me, it would be a question of if it feels kind of right. So little recap, play through the beginning of the arrangement here. Yeah, I would say at the moment from my side of things, I'm gonna move all that across as I feel like I've only just brought the melody in there and there's a lot of room to kind of continue with this almost second verse feel with this little bit of early melody happening here, even though later we've got, this is the sort of second verse more here.
have that note I think as well there. Let's try that again. Stitch those together. All right, well, uh, on that note, I'm going to call it a wrap for today. Uh, I hope you can join me in week 11, uh, the coming weekend's stream for my weekly stream number, sorry, 12, should I say, this was 11. And um, yeah, I'm gonna pick up uh, again, like today's, was, today's video was picking up from where I started this new music idea. Today's been kind of finishing a bit, evolving it a bit, and then getting it into the start of what will become the Loop 2 arrangement. Uh, if you've been with me during the stream, thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you found it beneficial. You've taken away some tips and tricks with Ableton Live, Ableton Live 12, using some of the built-in instruments. Uh, you know, the theme of the channel here is a lot about, um, you know, doing things unscripted and raw successes and failures sometimes, you know, but that's the real life situation of being a music producer. Also showing you, you know, do we need to spend a lot of money on third party plugins? Can we get Ableton devices and effects to sound the way we want them to and make the music we're looking to make? So thanks again from me. Uh, hope you can join me in the coming stream next weekend. Wishing you a great rest of your Sunday. Enjoy it. And of course, if you did enjoy the content on this channel, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will drop at the end cards here the video from the week before, weekly live stream number 10. So if you did miss out on that, go check it out. It will bring you up to speed of how I got to where I began today and how I incorporated some of these kind of bicep sounding techniques, also a bit of over mono Joy Orbison. So eventually when we get to the peak here, you can kind of hear those influences in the gated chords and the idea behind that. And uh, the bass line is a little bit uh, over mono, I think, uh, the nice Reese kind of sustained low bass. And I think the chords and the gating is kind of up the street of bicep. So thanks again. Hope you've enjoyed it. Take care of yourselves and I will catch you in the next one. Ciao for now.